the dude that was homeless that's now got more money than he knows what to do with my good buddy, Mr. Marlon Faulkner. Come on now. This dude, it doesn't get much better than Marlon. What's, what's up, up? What's up? What's up? 8% nation. Come on now. Go. Dude's freaking energy. Let's go. Hey, listen, motion creates emotion, baby. That's what you taught me, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, man. I'm Listen, I, I've got a bone to pick with you because you had me come up to Springfield to your office, and I thought we were friends and we we're just going to hang out. And I was a little, you know, I, I, my hair wasn't cut. I wasn't good. And you said, hey, look at that. There's a studio. Let's go in there, Marlon. And so I walk in the studio and I'm looking around, and you go, oh, look, there's some chairs. Let's sit down. And we sat down and recorded one of the most incredible. That video has changed my life. The number of people that have reached out to me that want to work with me because of you, man. You are an influencer, and I'm just glad to know you and glad to be a part of this thing, man. Boom, dude. The, everybody knows Marlon Faulkner, man. The, the interview that changed the industry forever. Dude goes from homeless to making hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he is absolutely crushing it. Uh, the interview is a homeless to 100K a month. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, I think we've got like 30,000 agents that have seen that over the course of last year and it's all you man i mean did you know that you would have such an impact when you jumped on and just started talking about your story i didn't and, and i didn't know why because it's my story so a lot of times people don't like the adversity in because they don't know it's that's part of their story when i was homeless i didn't know that i would be sharing that story and so if i were to complain and stop so no i, I didn't think it was I, I didn't think my life was that impactful i just knew i didn't want to stay where i was at and the fact that we got it out there and, and listen, it's going to continue to get out there. I'm working with coach Michael Burt now and starting to work on a book with him and just starting to do stuff with you, brother. It, it has opened my eyes that people, they, they love the rags to riches story, but sometimes they don't want to live it. People want the heaven. They don't want the hell. So I, I didn't know, man. Woo! Dude, <laughs> I think you can jump on anytime, anywhere with anyone and change people's life. That's what I think. Well, I, th I think I'm the best kept secret in America. Come on now. Yeah, Dude, we're and, and it ain't bad. And, and what's funny is those those listening, like if you don't think that about yourself, mm -hmm. that's a problem. You should, man. Mm -hmm. And and Marlon now does, which is incredible. Uh, who, what are you most excited about uh, Friday and Saturday for this 8% virtual conference? Because you are going to be on the event, dropping it like it's hot and freaking bringing it, bro. I'm bringing it uh, for sure, but I'm excited just about hearing you've sat down with the legends. Um, when I, you know, I always heard Cody that you you are like the five friends that are closest to you, and the five people around you that's who you like. Well, when I was homeless, when I when I moved back into my house, I started listening to Eric Thomas, Les Brown, Tony Robbins. You know, I started listening to all these guys. So you, you've got some heavy hitters on, and so I'm excited just to hear from not just. A Brian Tracy, which I can't wait to hear. That. Not just a Les Brown, who's one of my all-time favorites. Not just in the the, 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 the bomb dot com. I think the best in the in the universe because I heard there's a guy on Mars that speaks. But I think Eric Thomas can beat him too. And so I'm just excited about hearing from everybody because this is what I love about you, Cody. You put together something where people can get more. Like my mom always told me, there's givers and takers, and buddy, you're a giver. And so I'm just excited about watching what you put together. For free, like a free conference, like 10,000 agents. I'm mad we don't have 100,000 on. Like we can't get 10,000 agents. Listen, I'm, I'm giving $101. I'm giving 101. Tell me where to send it. Whoever's doing something, post something. Post Hold on now. Let me go. Let's go. Listen, to, tomorrow's a new day, but today is the day. Today is right. now. The only time we have is today. And I get okay. fired up. I get. I heard Nate offer. That's why I jumped on. I looked up and Nate offered. I'm like, why is Nate on and I'm not on? And what that man did for my life, he changed my life because he picked up a phone and called me. That's right. What if, it. what if right now someone can pick up a phone and call somebody and it changes their life? Maybe they're not homeless. What if, what if, what if they're, they're making money that costs too much? What if they're a job that they can't leave that they hate? Yeah. What if there's someone out there that you need to pick up the phone and call that that has you know some medical issues or family or man, come on, let's pick up the phone. Yeah. Yes, I love it, dude. That's what it's all about. Well, here's here's what here's what we could do. You you really want to give away a hundred bucks? Yeah. Okay. Why don't we have you? Um, see if you can get like a little table or something. Um, I'm about to drink some soup, by the way. Um, <laughs> I haven't eaten either. When you said that, I was like, I haven't eaten either. I thought about leaving, and you said this is influence, people. I was like, well, Landon's on, and someone else. I'm gonna go get some eat. And you said I'm not eat. I'm not eating. I'm like, dang it, I can't eat. 
because of Cody. Let's go. Influence. Oh, baby. Uh, let's givers, not takers. We're giving. That's it. Uh, how about how about someone that actually goes to 8%? Uh, how about the person that goes to 8%virtual.com and registers the most amount of people? Don't even, don't even, doesn't, and, and then tells them, hey, I registered you for you for this because you need to hear it. That's good. 100 bucks. How, how crazy is that? The person that does that, and they can prove with the list. Okay, so take a picture of the list, send it to Cassidy at Cody Askins after you do it, manually go register them, report it back to Cassidy that you did it, and we will choose the person that registered the most people. Thank you, Kelly, by the way, um, for 8%virtual.com because that, that's that's Marlon's way of giving back. So thank you for continuing to give back uh, pretty much every time I see you, man. You just give back. Well, man, you've got this incredible team. Uh, Lauren and the team, you guys just heard from Landon. He gave you a virtual tour, which means yeah. I got to come back to the office. But you guys give so much. You guys are, we're, we're, it's almost blast off. Like you guys are down to the last, to the, well, this is, this is cutting time. I'll just say it that way. Uh, this is cutting time. We want to make sure stuff goes. And the staff that you have and what you're putting together is so incredible. How can people not get signed up? Just come, it's free. What are you, what are you going to do? Watch, watch basketball? You can watch yeah. Madness, watch watch kids shoot a basketball, which is great. I'm going to watch it too, but not during Eight Percent Nation. That's right. That they, they say, man, make make the barrier to entry so low that you do it. You do your part to help everyone be successful. Absolutely. And, you, and you've always done that, man. You know. Well, man, I'm, I want to be where the fire's hot, man. That's why I like sticking around you and just watching you win. Watching what you're doing next. I asked you last time. Um, my wife and I were talking. I, I called because you were somewhere. You're always somewhere. Like, I can't believe you're at home. I don't even know why you bought the new home. I'm going to come live in your new home because you're never there. But uh, when? but when I got off the phone with you, my wife said, I said, man, he makes me feel better about myself. Mm. How many people do you guys know that when you get off the phone with them, you feel better about yourself? That's Cody Askins. That's 8% Nation. That's what we're trying to do here. Mm. You're always lifting, man. You're giving and taking, and, and brother, you've given so much. I, I want to give back by speaking. I want to give back by donating a hundred bucks. I want to do whatever I can to help people realize that they need this. That they need this. They do. So, they do, man. How how did how did Marlon Faulkner become Marlon freaking Faulkner? Well, hold on, let me close my door. Let's, 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 let's get too much excitement. Everybody, it's rowdy. It's getting rowdy. Everybody, they, they, they got quiet. Well, I, I, I became Marlon Faulkner because my mom and dad, I'm just teasing. Um, that's, that's how I originally started. But um, I became Marlon Faulkner because uh, a mandate offer picked up the phone and called me and said, you're worth more than you are. Yep. You don't even know how good you are. I became Marlon Faulkner because I got around uh, a company at Symmetry Financial Group and, and got around a guy like an Edward Pritchett or Brad and Matt Smith, the guys that were better than me. See, I was taught the first thing, the, the biggest thing that, or the most expensive thing you own is your ego. Mm. And I got to be around men that didn't have egos. They had, they had what I wanted, and they allowed me the opportunity to come in and follow them and make mistakes and screw it up and fall down and, and, and keep going. My, my buddy Brian Delaney told me this the other day. He said, when my son began to walk, he said, he said, you know why most people fail at life? Because when they fall down, people overreact. He said, when my son was learning how to walk, when he would fall down, we would clap and cheer. I became Marlon Falcon because every time I fell down, I had men that didn't overreact in my life, but they clapped and cheered. And they said, that's good. You're getting closer. You're getting better. Oh, that's good. Sorry. You get me going, dude. Dude, we're now, we're now going to charge for this. Anybody that's watching for free, please use the credit card into the, into the machine. It's going to go to Marlon, not me. He's going to. We're going to collect money from Marlon today because of how incredible it, it, he is, and I'm a freaking gold. He's dropping, man. Um, Chelsea on Chelsea Baker said, "Hey, I work with him." Did she? Hey, Chelsea, what's going on, sis? Eight percent nation. Listen, you, you. When the first time, listen. No, you. Let me talk. Let me ask a question. You're eating. You eat. Let me ask the question. Dang it. I met you and I said, why 8% Nation? And you said, I have a dream to help every insurance agent in America. And you're a kid, man. It's, it's, it wasn't about you. It was about what you could do for other people. 
That's why 8% Nation. That's why there's a Marlon Faulkner, because there's people like Cody Askins that care more about others than they do themselves. So to answer your question, how did I become Marlon Faulkner? Because I met men that cared more about me than they did themselves. I met a Cody Askins. I met a coach, Michael Burt, that cares more about me than he does himself. Wow. That's good, man. Jeez. Jeez. I'm ready to – I'm fired up. Are you guys fired up, man? Who, who's, who's ready to run through the wall? Who's going to invite – 8,000 people on their own to this birthday <laughs> conference. Because, because, like Marlon's talking like this for free. Can you imagine what he's going to talk about on a virtual conference? This is just impromptu. Imagine when he's prepped and ready. Fired up, brother. Fired up. I'm just so fired up to be a part of. Listen, I, I don't like busy people like busy people. But you know what? Important people like important people. What do I mean by important? I mean that Cody Askins is doing something. Coach Burt is always doing something. Nate Alford is always doing something. We're, we're always, Brad Hanna, always doing something. Like, I don't want to just sit around and live life anymore. I got to go. I only get one life. You don't, you don't get any, Coach Michael Burt says, you, this ain't no practice life. You don't get a second life. What are you waiting for? Eric right. Thomas, my favorite video. He said, what are you waiting for? Find out what you want and get up and go make sure every day that you're going after that thing. So why aren't you inviting people to 8% Nation? Exactly. Here's why, Cody, because there's two kind of pains in life. Are you, are you seeing my, my text, by the way? Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, Thanks. you're good. Here's, here's what I know in life that I learned, that there are two, two types of pain. There's the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. And when I was homeless... Most of my life, when I, when I was homeless and most of my life, all I did was focus on the pain of regret. I wish I had done this. Well, I knew such and such before he did this. And I remember when she did that. And, and, and I could have been that good. There's only two pains in life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Listen, the pain of, the pain of discipline weighs ounces. The pain of regret weighs tons. And I didn't want to regret. I was scared when Nate Offer called me. And said, hey, I want you to join this, this, this insurance company. I was scared to death. I wasn't living at home. But I was tired of regretting. I was tired of it. Are you tired of regretting? When I got, when I got to Symmetry Financial Group and I started working, the pain of discipline hurt. I wasn't used to having a schedule. I wasn't used to reading books. I wasn't used to waking up early. I wasn't used to meditating. But the pain of discipline ways that it was so worth it. See, I was always taught, don't ask, don't ask what it's going to cost, ask what it's worth. I love my, my wife. We'll, we'll go shopping. And, and, and when I was, when we were broke, we were on food stamps, we'd always look at the price, like, what's it going to cost? We don't do that anymore. So what, how much is this worth to us? What is this worth? What's it worth you to get 10 people to 8% nation? What's it worth at the company you're at and what you're doing? What's it worth? Not how much is it going to cost you? Is it going to cost you time? Is it going to cost you energy? Is it going to cost you effort? We're bringing fire. He's got some. He's got some heavyweights lined up. Listen, it's not about speaking on the stage. I don't care. I don't need to speak. I want to listen. I still have things to learn. I still got room to grow. But I don't want the pain of regret. I'm inviting people to eight percent nation. Why? Because it may change their life. How selfish would I be if I didn't invite someone to something? that potentially could change their life like my life was changed. It ain't about me. It's just not. It's not. It's about the lives that we're trying to change a free event. What if one person's life is worth changing? Because I know I was that one person and they'd offered. He called a bunch of people, but I answered. He said a bunch of things, but I listened. He told me what to do, and I heard him. It's time to go to the next level. It's time to level up. If you're tired of doing what you've been doing, let's do something new. Let's go new places. Let's dream bigger. Let's have more. Let's do more. Let's be more. I don't know why Cody's letting me talk. I, feel, I love it. I think this is the first live event I've ever spoken on. I don't think I've ever spoken on a live event before. I, Cody, I could go. My, my buddy told me the other day, he said, listen, he said, before you, he said, before you learn to walk, you got to learn to crawl. Mm. 
He said, before you learn to run, you got to learn to walk. Well, this is my buddy, Brian Delaney. He said, but before you learn to fly, before you got to learn how to run. And he said, here's the reality. Most people never take off in life and fly because they got too much baggage. He said, last time I went to the airport, they only let me check two. And see, Cody, before I became Marlon Faulkner, I had all kinds of, I had, I had Chicago airport full of baggage, wondering why I couldn't take off. Why can't I be like Cody Askins? Why can't I be like a Les Brown? I had too much baggage. And it was an event like this that I went to at Symmetry Financial. I went to an event and I got to hear something that changed my life. And I realized I got to start laying down baggage. I can't live the way I used to live. I got to do something different. And man, I started flying. So maybe if where you're at, maybe it's not doing more. Maybe it's letting go of what you haven't let go of. See, we always, on January 1st, we want to do more, be more, have more. But if your cup's full, how do you get more? Maybe you got to pour some stuff out. Maybe at 8% Nation, you're going to hear something that lets you know, hey, it's okay to pour this out. Dude, you got to let me go. You got to get me off of here. I'm about to start preaching. Come on, Phil. <laughs> That's all I got to do, man. I just got to give you the mic and, and get out of the way. Man, I love it. Like, like when we play basketball together and we're on the same team, you give me the ball and you get out of the way. When we speak, I'm going to just give you the mic and I'm going to get out of the way. <laughs> I'm not going to make this public, but Cody Askins and I do have a bet when we play basketball. When I was a football player. We play basketball. There's a, there's a bet. We might have to YouTube live this event because I've, I've got a lot of pride. I started working out. Listen, before I was talking about working out, bro, I'm 60 pounds down. I'm ready for you. And I'm not going to take into consideration that I'm older. That, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I'm not going to use excuse. I'm a football player. I'm just going to make it happen. That, listen, you taught me that. I just got to go to work. And so when we play basketball, I'm going to go to work on you. And I know you're good. But listen, dude, I was, I was born for challenges. I was like, I was like pizza dough. Every time you turn up the heat, I rise, brother. Let's go. That's a new one. Golly, I got to write that down. I just thought of that. <laughs> I played, I played Sunday night. And the longer we played, the better I got. I mean, there was five, five really good guys on the other team. And I had some scrubs and we won every game. The long we, we went like seven games in a row. I played for three hours on Sunday night. Like Eric Thomas said, you got that dog in you, buddy. Go on there. I love the challenge. Listen, if you score on me once, you might not. Listen, you might you scored once, but you may not score again. And if you score again, um, listen, I'm built to wake up and get up. That's it, Most dude. Most people are built to fall down. I'm, I'm, I'm built to fall down and get up. That's what Les Brown says. He said, if you can fall on your back, that's good. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Don't get me started on my guys. You Come on now. Who, who are you most excited to listen to this weekend? Um, I, I listen to Eric Thomas every day. Yeah, I, I listen to Les Brown three or four times a week. I really am interested. Though. I've never heard Brian Tracy. I've read his books. I've never heard from him. And some of the stuff he said was fired. Um, so I'm excited to listen to that. One of the greats in the industry. Oh, it's freaking ridiculous. Yeah. The, the knowledge he has. I'm, I'm just, you know what, Cody, I'm, I'm not going to pick. I'm just excited. Number one, I'm excited for you and what you're doing. In a world where COVID is is taking people out of the game, you rose up. Like, no, you got to keep rising up. You're doing a free event. That's it. I'm, I'm just, well, I'm just yeah. excited. I'm, not, I'm just excited. Can't you tell I'm excited? I'm excited, baby. Woo! I can I can tell you're excited, dude. The key, the key I'm noticing, man, is is uh, to helping people. Go give Brian Tracy a bunch of money, and then give it away for free. <laughs> My everybody, everybody's like, dude, why the heck are you not charging for this? You could bring in, you know, ten thousand people at a hundred bucks, you know, and bring in a hundred grand, a, a million bucks, maybe. You know, I'm like, well. I don't know if that's, I just, that's just, uh, that's not what this is, this one's about, you know? Mm -hmm. So will you, will you please tell the story about when you were going to work? And you, that's my favorite story. I, it's the best, you guys, listen, this is the best story. I tell this story and then at the end I say, by the way, it was Cody Askins, not me, but I tell this story. Will you please tell the story? It's my favorite story. You're a better storyteller than me, but I'll do my best. Okay? Yes, please do. It. Please do. It. I, I was, when I was 16 years old, I was working at a little grocery store called Apple Market in Rogersville, Missouri. 
and I was supposed to go to work on a Saturday from four o'clock to 10 o'clock. I was part time. I was 16 years old. I was like, uh, I was getting carts out of the parking lot. I was filling the shelves. I was mopping the floor. Like I did all that. And, you know, full, putting the boxes in the box breaker downer in the back, whatever it was called. It probably yeah. wasn't called that. And um, I went, I was, I, it was a Saturday. It was about three o'clock. Supposed to go to work in an hour. And I was throwing up. Didn't feel well. Tummy ache. And actually puking. And I go to my dad and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm not feeling real well. I'm not going to go to work today. And he looked at me and said, and I still hear this today every time I don't want to do something. He said, you do whatever you want to do, but you know what I would do. And so I, I went to work because I've never seen him miss a day of work. Okay. He's been very healthy. He's been very fortunate, but I've never seen him miss a day of work in 31 years. Mm -hmm. Here's why I love that story. I'm trying not to get emotional, man, because I didn't have a dad to tell me that. Mm. Like I think about who could I have been if I had a man in my life that I looked up to that spoke to me like that. Yeah. That's how I felt for most of my life, but you know how I feel now? That's the story I told my sons. Mm. See, sometimes if you if you don't get what you want out of life, you have to become what you want out of life. That's right. So I never had someone tell me that. If I didn't want to go to work, I just didn't go. And I lived mm. most of my life on food stamps, not able to take care of my wife and four kids. Hmm. But now that I know, now that I've heard the story, you do what you want to do, but you know what I do. That's it. Brother, come on, dude. I'm, that might be yeah. my that, that com His competitiveness came out in that statement, didn't he? I mean, it he came out. It it came out. You do what you want to do, but you know what I do. Well, dude, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump to um, my buddy Ali in a second. Um, what, what's got you? Uh, what's got you so? For, for those that may, maybe somebody's on the fence um, about registering themselves, registering their entire company, their entire, you know, everybody they know they've ever known. Mm -hmm. Why should they do so and show up Friday and Saturday? Hmm. What if the life that you're living is not the life you're supposed to be living? Mm. What if all the dreams that you've ever dreamed are minute compared to the dreams that you're supposed to be living? What if the charity you're supposed to be able to give to? What if your kids are supposed to have more? What if you're supposed to do more? What if you're supposed to be more? What if you find that at 8% Nation? Or go on living life just the way you have. Mm. I don't know what you do, but I know what I do. Come on now. <laughs> you do what you want to do. You know what I'm going to do. Boom. I'm excited to hear you uh, drop it like it's hot on, on this weekend, man. Thank you for being a part of it. Thank you for coming in and spending a few minutes with us. You're an unbelievable dude, and everybody needs to get to know Mr. Marlon Faulkner. I appreciate you. I love you and your wife. I love what you're building. I love that I learned that it's not just about me. It's about so many more. And we've heard it said a million times, but nobody does it, but you did, Mr. Askins. If you want to get what you want out of life, help enough people get what they want out of life. I mean, you're a living example of that. And I'll forever stay hitched to your wagon, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. See Thank you guys you, at 8% Nation. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Appreciate you, buddy. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Make sure you guys go to 8percentvirtual.com to register to get a part of this thing, to get leveled up. If you don't quit, you can't fail. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. So, so on today's show, the five tips to become the best salesperson ever on planet Earth, period. Boom. Yeah. There you go. Let's do that. Come on now. Let's, Let's do it, it. man. Let's do it. What do you got for us, Cody? Let's do it. Well, thank you guys for having me, man. I, I love the show. Love you guys. Love. We've been hanging